Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. The Internet Protocol is a Layer 3 protocol. Now that's Layer 3 in the OSI model. And in the real world, we're going to refer to the OSI model for the most part. Uh, we may refer to the DOD model, but normally we'll specify uh, this is Layer 2 of the DOD model. But when we talk about uh, a Layer 3 device or a Layer 2 device, we're really talking about the OSI model. So IP is Layer 3, and of course the DOD model, it's actually Layer 2, the Internet layer. IP is responsible for logical addressing, and that's going to be our IP addresses. And the reason it's logical is because we can put one or many IP addresses on one adapter, and we can actually change those IP addresses. So they are logical as opposed to a physical address, like a MAC address, that's actually burnt into a networking card. IP is also responsible for routing datagrams, which are also known as packets, across IP networks. So when we're talking about layer 2 of the OSI model, we're just talking about uh, routing frames or switching frames within a single network, whereas IP is responsible for taking those frames, encapsulating them into packets, and routing them to the correct network. At that point, they get delivered as frames. So without IP in layer 3, we couldn't go across networks. IP is also a connectionless protocol, and what that means is that when we send a packet, we don't get any kind of acknowledgement back that that packet was delivered. It's kind of like when we see, send a piece of mail uh, through the post office. That mail may or may not get there. Technically, we don't know until you know maybe we send it to our grandma, and then our grandma calls us and says, hey, you know, I got your card, thank you very much, then we know we got it. But as far as the post office is concerned, we don't get any kind of acknowledgement that that mail was actually sent unless we specify, hey, we want a certain type of mail where there's a signature and we get an acknowledgement via email or something like that. But IP, we don't get any kind of acknowledgement. Therefore, there could be data corruption along the way with the packets, uh, lost data packets, duplicate arrival, so multiple packets could arrive, uh, out of order packet delivery. If we're sending a large file, let's say over the internet, that file gets broken up into a lot of different packets, well, there's no guarantee that those packets are all going to take the same path to get to the destination. And that's actually one of the advantages of the IP protocol. But because of this, Packets can actually arrive out of order. So one packet that is delivered first might arrive after a packet that is delivered after it. And that's what makes this a connectionless protocol. Now, if we do need connection, which a lot of times we do, uh, we do need to make sure packets are assembled in order, we need to make sure packets are delivered, then we rely on an upper-level protocol like TCP. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But just know that IP itself is actually connectionless. So now let's take a look at what an IP header looks like. And we, we took a look at an IP packet a little bit earlier, but now we're going to go more in depth into what the IP header actually is. First, we've got the version. And this is going to be a 4 for IP version 4. And we're really going to uh, focus on IP version 4 here because we're going to get into IP version 4 later, or IP version 6 later. The next field is header length. So this is going to let whatever is reading this packet know what the size of this header is. The next field is priority and type of service. Type of service tells how the datagram should be handled. The first three bits are the priority bits, which are now called the differentiated, differentiated service bits. Total length. This is going to specify the total size of the packet, including the header. Identification. This is unique IP packet values used to differentiate fragmented packets from different datagrams. And flags. This specifies whether uh, fragmentation should occur. And fragmentation is when a packet gets broken up into smaller packets. Next is fragment offset. 
and this provides fragmentation and reassembly. If the packet's too large to put in a frame, so it gets has to be fragmented, it also is what allows different MTUs on the Internet. And MTU stands for Maximum Transmission Unit, which is normally 1,500 and specifies how big the maximum transmission unit can be in size. Next is Time to Live, and this is actually created when the packet is created, and uh, it specifies how many hops this packet can go through before it it dies or it disappears. And a, a hop is how many routers it goes through. So this Time to Live helps with uh, a packet continuously circling the network because it actually gets decremented each time it goes through a router. Protocol this is going to specify the upper layer or same layer, layer 3 protocol, that this packet should be handed off to, like ICMP or TCP or UDP. Header checksum, this is going to provide a cyclic redundancy check just for the header to make sure there wasn't any corruption with the header. Source IP address, this is where the packet came from. Destination IP address is where the packet's going. Options, this can be used for network testing, debugging, security, and a lot more what gives it this header its flexibility. And that's actually why we need to specify a header length because the header size can vary. And data, and this is what's being encapsulated by this IP header, which is normally a segment.